All right, hey everybody, this is Mike here. So we are going to do a video on KM Force ACK uh, in fed half wave antenna. Now this is a 49 to one in fed half wave antenna kit. It is on his website and you can either get an option of having a uh, BNC connector like I did here, or you can have a SO239 connector on it. Uh, now the kit has everything you need to uh, build the antenna. Uh, it works without a tuner on 10 meters, 15 meters, 20, and 40 meters. And basically it is a 67 foot uh, wire antenna that's in fed. And uh, everything you have is included in the kit. You get the one 140-43 uh, toroid. Uh, you get the nuts and bolts to attach the uh, antenna. And you get the magnet wire. And basically you assemble it yourself. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna see how easy it is to assemble. And then we're going to test it out and see how well it works. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in the kit is we have to assemble the magnet wire around the toroid. Now, it comes with plenty of magnet wire, so if you do mess up, you have a little bit of extra. But don't mess up uh, because there's not much extra. So we're going to pull this out, straighten it up, and we're going to start by doing this. Now, he does have a video on, a uh, link to a video on his page that tells you how to build this. But we're going to see if I, I can show you what you need to do as well. Alright, so to start this process, we're going to take an end of the wire. And we're going to measure out about 8 inches of wire. And once we have 8 inches of wire measured out, we're just going to bend it right here back on itself. So we have a loop that's about 8 inches. And we're going to start maybe about 2.5 inches up is about where I'm going to start. We're going to pinch it together. And then we're going to use a screwdriver to just start winding the antenna. Now we're going to wind it fairly tight, um, but we don't want to wind it so tight that we're going to break the wire or something like that. But we do want to have a firm twist on it. Uh, you may have to use a scoot, um, pair of pliers or something like that to hold this end down here. But we're just going to keep winding the wire like this until we have a nice tight twist on it. All right, so when you're done winding the wire, this is what you should have a nice tight twist on it. And then you're going to have two pigtails over here, one about two and a half inches, and the other one's going to be the rest of the wire. So when we start winding this wire, we're going to go ahead and stick it through the toroid. And we're going to kind of put your hand on it right there where the, um, the split is. And you're going to wind it two times. And these are going to be your two primary twists or your two primary winds right here so you have it going above the top twice and you have it going above the bottom twice and those are your two winds now at this point you want to check because it's going to sit here on the winder and you want to make sure you have enough wire to get to the um, center and you got to have enough wind wire to get to the other uh, tab so as long as you have enough wire uh, hanging out that you can get to uh, where you need to get to you're good from this point we're just going to keep winding it through and we're going to wind it like a total of eight times through here and then we'll end up crossing through and I push it through like this and then I just grab the other end and pull it. Push it through, grab the other end and pull it. Push it through, pull it. Now on this eighth one, let's push these together a little bit here. On this eighth one, when we push it through, we're going to cross over it to the other side and we're going to start winding the other way. So now we're winding the opposite direction and we're going to do this until there's a total of 14 wraps of wire around this toroid. Alright, so what we have here now is 14 wraps around the toroid. We have two primaries and then it starts with 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 
on the eighth one, it goes through the center, and here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 comes out the bottom here. Um, now we went ahead and cut off the excess wire. Uh, as long as we have, you know, three to five inches hanging out here, we'll have plenty of extra wire. At this point, let's go ahead and attach this onto, let's go ahead and attach this onto um, the winder. Now it does come with three zip ties. I suggest upgrading those zip ties to something a little bit stronger. And I'm gonna use these bright green ones. So uh, you can see the three holes where they line up um, here, here, and here. We're just gonna put three zip ties around there and then zip tie this onto it. So once we have the three zip ties in, we're just gonna set this on here. And we're gonna do it a little bit strategically because we're gonna want this wire going to the center, this wire going over here, and then this wire is gonna wrap around and hook to the screw and the antenna that's gonna be mounted on here. So once you get it kind of set at the angle you want, uh, it's pretty easy doing this yourself to pull this through and then just feed it right through the, uh, the zip tie. All right, so once we got the um, zip ties tight, we're gonna go ahead and cut those off, discard the extra pieces that we don't need. And then we're gonna size up our wire. We're gonna have one wire that comes around and connects to the screw that's gonna go through here. Uh, the next wire is gonna come and attach to that center. And then the double wire is gonna come and attach to there. So we're gonna go ahead and snip that off right about where it needs to be so it can be soldered. Same thing with these. We'll kind of snip it down to size. And this one's already snipped there. This one over here comes with a crimp, crimpable end like that. So we're gonna go ahead and crimp that. And then we'll put that one on the screw. And we'll set this one first. And then the other things will be soldered. So once we get this cramped on there, uh, you can go ahead and put the screw in it, hold it in place, flip it over. At this point, we're gonna put a screw on so that this uh, doesn't come out. And we're just gonna tighten this down. So that it's not gonna go anywhere. The antenna is gonna go on here in a second, but at first, let's flip it over again and we got to solder these three points. So the double wires are going on the, uh, the outside. The single wire is going to go in that center. And then uh, if we want to, we can put a bit of solder there too, uh, just to be safe and make sure that's soldered. Uh, after we get them soldered, we'll go ahead and hot glue all these wires down, put some hot glue around that to protect it, uh, attach the wire and uh, the antenna, and that's going to be it. All right, so what we did is we got these three points soldered. We got this on the outside one. We got this soldered into the uh, the center pin. And I didn't put any solder right here, but that's a good, good connection. We're gonna end up putting um, hot glue over all of this and the hot glue is warming up. But one thing you're gonna wanna do, when you guys go to solder this, you're gonna wanna take the edge, and you're gonna wanna kind of um, buff up the um, the wire here and get it so that it's nice and shiny and get some of this coating off of the wire. So if you have something that you can use to uh, um, sandpaper or something like this where you can come and just kind of scratch this coating off the wire so you start to see it shiny there, that's what you're gonna want to uh, do. And that will give you a good solder connection right there. And we're just gonna put hot glue all around this on the wires going down to protect them so that they don't move as well. All around the edges here. And just build it up around here. Just so that we can get everything protected. I'm gonna put a couple layers up under here and build that up as it dries. And then same thing over here on this one. 
we're just going to put some hot glue around this wire so that this wire is protected and doesn't move along with that connection right there. All right, so now that we got everything glued up, uh, as it starts to dry, this will become more uh, hazy. But you can see I got hot glue everywhere on all the wires holding them down so that nothing's going to move, come unsoldered. Uh, next, we got to attach the antenna. So we already have the screw here. We'll go ahead and put a washer on it. Throw on the antenna. Uh, basically the antenna's connection and then you got a strain, strain relief right there. Let's throw on the other washer. And put the wing nut on. And that's going to be the antenna attached to it. Uh, when we go to wind it, it's going to get wound around the edges like this. Instead of winding um, straight around it, it's going to get wound in a figure eight pattern. So one of the final things you'll have to do is put this insulator on the end of the antenna. Uh, this is a little dog bone and uh, what we did is we fed it through, twisted it several times, and then we just put some green heat shrink on here to hold that in place so that it's not going to come off. Uh, now we can attach this to a rope and pull it up over a tree. All right, so let's look at this antenna and see if we can take a couple measurements here and see what we have. This is the second time I've had the SWR meter in it. First time was in my backyard. Uh, I had the toroid wrapped wrong. Uh, I missed one wrap on the toroid. So uh, it was measuring best SWR right below all the bands where I wanted it to be, right below 20, right below um, 40, that sort of thing. So. Uh, in this situation, we are about five feet above ground on uh, this side here. And then on the other side, when we come over here, uh, we have this up in a tree. And um, we're going over one of the branches up there on that tree. You can probably see the yellow rope and the green rope up there. And uh, we're going to say that's probably about, oh, 40, maybe, uh, maybe 50 feet up. So... We're going to take 50 feet up on that side, come down to about 5 feet on this side. Uh, this is going into a 35 foot or a 30 foot piece of coax cable. So we're going to pull this up to about 5 feet above ground and see what kind of measurement we can get uh, with it sitting about that angle right there. All right, so I'm a one-man show, but let's see what we can do and uh, see how this is going to work. So uh, I'm at 14,300, right around there. And my SWR, okay, I got a nice two on there. My ohms is a little low. I'm reading about uh, a little over 25 ohms. I'd like to see that right at 50. So let me see if I can dial that up to 50 and see where we're at. Um, pretty darn close. Uh, now I'm at 3.13.9. Let me change thing here. 13.9. Right around 13.8 is where I think the beautiful sweet spot is. You're at 50 ohms. Your SWR is below 1.5. Uh, that's a good spot to be right there. So it's resonant just a little bit below where I would like it to be. Uh, the question becomes, does the antenna have to be a hair bit shorter or a hair bit longer? But uh, in this configuration right here, um, looks like the sweet spot is about 1368. Now let's go down to another place I like to use it at. 7200. And it looks like we're kind of way off. Ohms is way over here. So let's see if I can dial it in and see if I can get to 50. That's going up. Let's go 50 ohms. Again, right around there. That's too high. Right around here. Maybe even down a little bit more. Let's see. Oh, SWR is starting to go back up. So, 
I think the best I'm gonna get is right around almost 50 ohms here and uh, under 1.5. But again, instead of being at 72 where I'd like to be, I'm at 6.6. .6. So just a hair under uh, where I would like it to be. But uh, even at 7200, even um, 72 right here, 7211, that is close enough. My radio, my ICOM uh, 7300 can match that where it needs to be. Um, same thing when we go up here to 14. Um, once we get to about 14300, my ICOM can make that match no problem. And with this antenna, uh, I've gotten definitely out of the country. I've gotten all four corners of the United States from here in Tennessee, New York, California, Florida, uh, Utah, um, all that. All right, so my overall impression of this antenna, there are a lot of things about this antenna that make it an amazing antenna. First of all, you have the small form factor. Um, you could put this thing in the pocket of your cargo pants. It is that compact. Uh, it's easy to put in a backpack um, if you want to go do QRP or if you want to do something um, very portable. Uh, it'd be a great antenna for um, emergency work. It'd be easy to haul around in your truck or something like that. Uh, it does take a little long to deploy. You have to unwind 67 feet of wire to unwind it. And then you have to wind it back up when you're done. Uh, it probably takes me longer to wind it and unwind it than what it does to actually get my radio uh, and the power box and the battery box and everything set up on the table. Um, that is just a minor nuisance though. Um, yes, you could go buy the individual parts, uh, go buy the wire, the winder, the toroid, uh, all the hardware and everything someplace else and build it yourself. Uh, but being able to buy it as a kit for about 30, about 40 bucks uh, is a great deal. Uh, it comes with everything you need, easy to assemble, uh, works well. Um, it could probably be modified, lengthened, shortened a little bit to get SWR where you really need it. But like I said, with the internal tuner that I have, uh, it works just fine on my radio. Uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's just easy to do. My brother and I both use it for parks on the air, uh, portable. Uh, I've had it deployed in many different parks, many different places. Uh, both of our maps look amazing. Uh, he did this activation at Mackinac Island in Michigan, and uh, his map looks amazing. Uh, whenever I do it, my maps look amazing. So uh, I definitely am very satisfied with it for a $40 antenna and a little bit of work. Uh, it, it definitely does everything I need it to do, and uh, I've made a lot of great contacts with it. So that is my overall review of the KM4 ACK uh, portable antenna. Uh, you can get it from his website. I'll leave a link down below for you. If you like this video, leave comments uh, down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you've tried it before, let me know what you think of it. And uh, if you haven't tried it, uh, let me know if that's something that you'd consider getting. Uh, and if you don't think you'd use something like this, what do you use instead? Uh, start the conversation down below. And uh, thanks for all the, uh, the comments. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the page as well and uh, get notified of uh, other videos that I put up on ham radio and all the fun things I do and all the adventures I go on. Thanks a lot, 73s, and we'll talk to you later.